Hi guys, welcome back to our Hollywood. <laughs> the conversation that we just had. Yeah, it's and really then funny. I didn't even give us three seconds to recover. I know you didn't give me a beat. No, I was, I was like, like, okay, one, two, three, go. Um, okay, so we. Well, I'm Kim. Oh, oh my God, you're right. <clears throat> I'm Daniel, and okay, we have a fun little, it's a little special episode. Yeah, because like the original plan was we were not gonna have an episode today. Yeah, and Kim was like, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, she was like, it's gonna like ruin the like timing of everything. Because I'm also I'm pretty sure that like our 40th episode would have been on our birthday. Mm-hmm. If we had not skipped a week, yeah, I'm like, and that like kind of was upsetting, honestly. It wasn't that deep though. Yeah. Anyways, okay, so today we're gonna be talking about something that I'm sure, like a shorter episode, just like yeah. a little rundown about something that's important in the industry, especially for like things that we're always saying on the podcast that we want to like see yes. happen, and like, I mean, something we don't. I mean, I guess we kind of do talk about working conditions, especially with Izzy. She talked about it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, she did. Um, but also, she's like one of the only ones of our, one only one of our guests who's like currently in the industry. I mean, we are gonna have more guests, but they're just busy because they're working. I'm I'm in charge of scheduling from now yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, fully. Also, the sliding. I'm so sorry. Horrible, but it's also five. This is also I think the latest we've recorded. Oh wait, yeah. No, what did we fully record at night? No, but we didn't do it the day before. Oh, no, we we've didn't. never done it the day before. Oh yeah, I'm fully editing this like right after. Yeah. Anyway. Anyways, okay. So today's episode, the bonus Jonas episode. Did you mean Jonas like <laughs> Jonas brother? Yeah, I didn't realize that was like a Frankie Jonas reference. But I just remember. You also spelled Jonas wrong. Oh, I didn't. That's why I didn't get into it right now when you said. I didn't in the. In I was the, like, what's a Jonas? Bonus Jonas, like Jonas Brothers, because remember, yeah. like when we were like younger, people would be like, "Oh my God, the bonus Jonas." No, the and bonus Jonas is Frankie. Yeah. Anyways. Literally Scientology chain. Go check out Besties. Yeah. Um, <laughs> did uh, we talk about that too? Did we? I think we did. I think I mentioned it because I was listening to the oh, podcast. Yeah, maybe. It's like a, it's literally a multiverse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about the IATSE strike. Um, I just, I guess Daniel never noticed. So maybe you didn't notice. <laughs> but the little symbol, maybe you've been seeing people in the film industry post it. Saying that they support the strike, but this is like basically the union um, for it's so there's different unions for different um, jobs in the in the film and television oh. industry, but this one specifically mostly covers grips, cinematographers, editors, um, not customers, <laughs> Wait, customers. Why is that there? costume designers. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, and when hairstylists. When I read it, I literally that's like what I. Assumed. I well, because I was doing this while I was doing my yard sale, so I was oh. like trying to make sure people weren't stealing from me, and but also like doing this, um, and hairstylists, and that's over one hundred and fifty thousand workers, which is a lot, guys. That is a lot of people. I don't know if you knew. Um, and I think it's like mostly New York and LA people as well. Yeah, because that's like where the majority of the. Um, yeah. And you have to realize, like, not everybody that works in the industry is covered by the union. Yeah. Okay, so basically what what the acronym stands for is the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees, Moving Picture Technicians, Artists, and Allied Crafts of the United States. That's not part of it, but... Is it, it of the United States? Oh, it is yeah. of the United States. Oh, it's territories and Canada. Sorry, it stopped oh, reading before I, <laughs> I finished um, it. But basically why this is, like, okay, so they're negotiating, just, like, break it down, like, yeah. fa- surface level. Um, they are... Um, negotiating contracts between the al- oh, who is it Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. So these are like for people that don't know too much about the industry. There's above the line workers and below the line workers. So below the line workers are people like grip cinematographers. I mean, some cinematographers. It depends on like like how high you are. Yeah. Like if you're like the main cinematographer, you're above the line. But like yeah. every like. ADs I feel well I don't know it that's really ADs depends. are kind of yeah. like a but like they yeah. they are above the line but they work with the below the line people which yeah. is like above the line and below the line sounds really it, bad the way it's phrased already yeah iffy. but that's like the, the terminology that they even teach in and like colleges the line means stuff. like importance basically yeah it's really fucked it's, up it's not but like everyone's important well, <laughs> you know yeah, like it is things, <laughs> <laughs> but like that's the way I don't know that's just the terminology I know well because we I didn't make this place yeah I just remember the terminology yeah. being taught to me in college and yeah. I was like sounds a little weird to yeah, like, like tell people that. that are literally the grips that make everything yeah below oh, the wow. line because 
but I get it. But uh, it just seems like we can make better terminology. Yeah, one hundred percent. Um, so above the line people are producers, directors, the actors, like people that are getting paid like the big bucks. Yeah, to be there, which yeah, capitalism, baby, <laughs> <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Uh, so that's kind of like why they're negotiating with them is yeah. because the producers are the ones that like hire everybody. Um, so that's why they're negotiating with them and their contract ended pretty recently and they've been in negotiation negotiations for like a couple months and like it just has gone to the point where the producers are just not budging and what they're not budging on I just feel like is like it should already be like better yeah i literally was so shocked okay because i remember um was it when was it, when did we do izzy's episode was that last episode yeah it was well two episodes ago two episodes ago um uh it, our guest izzy is like already working directly in the industry and so she was telling us about like the like the like her past job, not her current job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my god, yeah. We just to like clarify. Yeah, <laughs> and not to get her in trouble, but like also Universal's not listening to this. But um, so Never she was know. telling us about like how in other jobs, like how they treat like below the line workers, and I was just I remember like after that I was like so discouraged because I was like I don't want that. Yeah, it's not what I want. But then this happened like a week Literally later. A week later. Like Our I think impact. no, no. no the way we always are like, oh my god, we manifested this. Yeah. <laughs> We're so annoying. No, we're really annoying. But sometimes it is kind of spooky. It is. No, it is. Because it's, it's like the most specific things. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Anyways. Speaking into existence. Honestly. Anyways. um, So what they're looking to change and like what we're gathering is what the producers are not budging on is excessive, unsafe, and harmful working hours. So basically this looks like they'll work like a 20 hour day yeah. and then come back the next day, like 12 hours later, yeah. which is like, I couldn't even imagine. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we might have to live that reality. But soon. also I think the thing is like these, the people that are um, in these positions, are, they don't want to complain about it because they can literally just like fire you and replace you with someone else. Yeah. Cause they, yeah, exactly. So it's, you're just kind of like stuck mm-hmm. because obviously this is like inhumane. Like this is literally awful. Yeah. But, that's just the first, that's just the first bullet point. Yeah. <laughs> And, um, but like, you can't complain about it cause they're like, okay, we'll buy them. We'll mm-hmm. find someone else. Everyone, like there are people dying to be in this position. So like, it's, what are you going to do? It's a really it? fucked up cycle. Yeah. Um, the next thing is unlivable wages, which is just insane when you think about like how much people make. Especially like, the cost of living in LA and New York. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. And then maybe having to like, and then also like getting reimbursed for things because i feel like sometimes maybe not on like professional sets but like <laughs> oh actually no i know some people that work on professional sets and they have to like pay for their own gas and stuff and they don't get oh. reimbursed for months and it's just like sometimes people don't have the money to like yeah. do that to like because they have to make rent and stuff um consistent failure to provide reasonable rest during meal breaks between work days and on weekends i was reading it through they have like an instagram about people yeah in the union like talking about their stories and like there's so many people that are like we only had like 10 minutes to eat and then we had to like go i remember when i was reading one and someone was literally having a medical emergency and one of the producers came out and was like can you like move her move them to the street and like and can you tell the ambulance to come without the lights on so we can continue filming Mm -hmm. like what that's literally so scary like an ambulance had to be called and like they wouldn't stop production f- so this person could get t- cared for well the the instagram account is i a underscore stories um, there's so many yeah and so they're anonymous submissions by people who have worked in the industry and like have had like really bad experiences um and they just dm the account and tell them tell them the tea so it's like, like for Dumois, example but for the union let me let me pick a random one okay this one says, costume coordinator here. I worked a total of 70 hours this week. I worked an additional 10 hours today to catch up on paperwork. I rushed out of the office to make it on time to my sister's birthday dinner. I'm literally crying in the restaurant's bathroom because I don't know how to turn my autopilot work self off. I'm mentally and physically exhausted. Mm. Um, that one's too dark. Well, let's just read it because trigger warning suicide. Um, 
But this one says, my daughter tried to commit suicide. I found her, picked her up, and loaded her in the car, took her to the hospital, handed her over for care, and was told I had to leave her. I went home and showered and drove to work because I had a 5.30 a.m. call. I didn't tell a soul. I didn't Ugh. tell my department head for fear of being fired. She would have fired me because it might have interfered with my work. I didn't tell HR because it would have caused trouble for my DH. And we were told not to do that. District head. What was DH? I don't know. But that literally. Department head. Oh, yeah. Um, so I kept it to myself. I took the bathroom breaks to call the hospital check in and then made arrangements for inpatient care for her all from my phone while texting on set because I feared losing my job as a single mom on a show that did not Ugh. allow for us to have personal lives that might affect our bosses or the show. And there's a lot. This account has 1,061 posts and they post more every day. That one was posted an hour ago. The one I just read. So this is not like a small thing. I know like having to lie to like your boss about yeah. why or like literally not tell your boss about something is happening. Te- like having to tell like you should be able to be just like, be like, I need I a family go. emergency. Yeah. yeah. Because I remember like, okay, this is completely, well, it's not off topic, but I remember like a, a job I used to work at, not industry related, but I remember like they would ask, like, you know how like when you want a day off, like I remember my manager would come up a to me reason. And, yeah, and be like, oh, what are you going to do? And I was like, why do you, it does not affect you. You don't need anyway. to tell them by the way. Oh no, I wouldn't. Yeah. Sometimes I would just because it was like nothing, like it wasn't a big yeah. deal. But sometimes when I was like, I'm just, oh, nothing. Yeah. Because it's like none of their business and that should. That it's okay to establish boundaries with like, even if you're yeah. like, it's just like a minimum wage job. You can just be like, oh, I don't feel comfortable like sharing the reason why I because just need a they, day off. They're counting on you to think that they're your friend. Yeah. Because then they can like make you feel guilty for But things. it's also like. It's so weird. The, it's not like fucking a whole ass industry like whether it's like a retail chain or like um any chain yeah or anything is going to like lose like shut down tomorrow because you didn't show up to work like it may suck for that one day for like other people but like if you have things you need to do you got things you need to do mm-hmm. anyways <laughs> back on topic and the last thing is working on certain new media streaming projects getting paid less even on productions with budgets that rival or exceed those traditionally released blockbusters okay i remember reading this one i literally was like this is shit. like this is that's shady. tea yeah. because the way it's worded like workers on certain new media streaming projects get paid less like we're looking at you they're literally dry i don't know who but netflix oh really probably okay. or maybe like um you know how like uh some youtube um well, shows I mean, will like have shows on like youtube and stuff yeah oh they, they like that. that oh really because joe i <laughs> joe Griswold was talking about it because he was saying how like they were shopping escape the night to like actual networks because youtube is like not gonna create OT. original content anymore if you're working on a set that has like a marvel level budget and they are not treating you like as a normal human being that's like actually crazy yeah, I don't know. I just don't understand because it, nothing- I think it's like really weird that the producers are doing this because producers are probably one of the most like they're above line. So they're higher paid. Yeah. And the fact that you're going to sit there and tell all the people that you have to employ. Sorry, your life is not worth yeah. the extra hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like yeah. what? That is just insane to me that like whoever is in like making the negotiations and the producers alliance telling these people that they employ your life is it doesn't matter to me yeah because the whole thing is money like that's the whole reason why there's negotiations because if you and also like another thing is like turnaround days so like having like two days on and like two days off or like yeah you know something like that where for but like usually how these work is like you're working every single day for like two weeks to get one day off yeah and then you have to do another two weeks or what if it's a movie it's months yeah and like maybe you get three days off in those three months yeah one day a month that's it that sucks yeah and then these producers that are like one of the most like influential and financially well-off people are gonna sit there and tell people no sorry you we need to cut costs on that yeah. front and then i remember seeing like people were saying like maybe in the article i think it was deadline like people in the union were saying they thought it was going to get better after covid especially because like they would have suggested hours like oh a 10 hour work day yeah but then one of the people were like we literally went straight off to a 20 hour work day yeah. in the middle of a pandemic 
don't know, dude. Well, okay, so the the petition is on actionnetwork.org, and we will put it in our Instagram, so Mm -hmm. anyone can sign it. You don't have to be um, a member. Yeah, it's just like allies. Yeah, so anyone can sign it. Um, I think right now, as of recording, they have uh, 73,807, and they need 28,000 more. Mm -hmm. Although this is a very... The goal is 1,000... It's very specific. 2,400. Yeah, it's a very specific number. I don't don't know know. if that was on purpose or not. Um, But another thing you can do is like... If you know somebody that's in the, in the union, um, because it's basically like they have to have volunteers to get the word out and yeah. stuff. And it's like sometimes maybe like they're older people, so they're not like on their phones all the time. If you know, like people in the union, like telling them to vote because they're going to have a vote to go on strike on October 1st mm-hmm. um, through the 3rd. And they need 75 percent approval yeah. in order to go on strike. And if they do go on strike, that's crazy. Yeah, because. OK, so another reason why this is like a really big deal yeah. and it's like it's honestly pretty life changing. Yeah. And I really do hope they go on strike. I hope so, too. Um, That it it's the first time that they this union has ever gone on strike yeah. ever in union history and i feel like they've, they've been around for a minute it's and it's a big deal because remember when like the, the there was that writer strike i don't know when it was it was a while ago but so like some shows like the way like their quality severely mm-hmm. lacked and it showed that like yeah you do need to treat writers like yeah and then people. you're gonna treat grips like shit they're the ones that literally set yeah. up everything before every like grips and like all these people are the people that get to set first yeah and have a lot of physical labor to do. Yeah. Like shit that they can get in- injured on. And another and they thing. they do get injured They on, do get fully. injured and they feel like they can't say anything yeah. because the producer's going to be like, well, I can't afford it. So. That thing. that Okay. So for, <laughs> for all that glitters we had. What was that thing called? The like the. The blankets? No. <laughs> oh, the. the, um, <laughs> the, the I know talking about. <clears throat> I don't remember right now. <laughs> Let me pull this on my own spit. Okay, so there was like this huge thing. It was like a like a tripod. I don't what what's that thing? There's pictures of it on Kim's Instagram. Yeah, that I forget thing the name of it. Is so painful after wearing, and we had a tiny DSLR. I oh, cannot yeah. imagine wearing one of those with a huge like black magic. Like I, when I did the sour imagine. prom, like there, there was a guy that had like a huge huge camera, and he it was on attached the, to his body, his and he was Literally. he was short. Yeah, he was like probably my height. <laughs> And he had to do that. That's literally, oh my god! It was, a, it was like a four-minute routine as well, and they keep had to keep doing it. And like on the breaks, somebody would come take the camera from him because like it was that fucking heavy. Yeah. You can't just hold it like that. So, anyways, all of us just we were just like keep looking around. Like <laughs> <laughs> the silence is very loud. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, so I wanted to read through the um the petition really quickly. Okay, so yeah, anyone can sign it. And it says, after months of negotiating successor contracts to producer IATSE basic agreement and the theatrical and television motion picture area standards agreement, the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. Oh my God, did you? The they need opening, to shorten these names. Yeah, they do. The <laughs> opening of the Academy Awards Museum was yesterday. Oh. I don't know why. We're, oh, because motion picture. I don't know. Anyway, which represents major film and television production companies announced it does not intend to make any counter offer to the IATSE's most recent proposal. Yeah. Because the these aren't like um, public negotiations. Yeah. So we just, it's kind of like whatever you hear is like, yeah. yeah. Um, throughout the bargaining process, the AMPTP has failed to work with us on addressing the most grievous problems in their workplaces, including, and which is the ones we just talked about. It is incomprehensible that the AMPTP and the, on, on, oh my God, an ensemble that includes media mega corporations collectively worth trillions of dollars claims and cannot provide behind the scenes crews with basic human necessities like adequate sleep, meal breaks, and living wages. Mm-hmm. Worse, management does not appear to even recognize our core issues as problems that exist in the first place. These issues are real for the workers in our industry and change is long overdue. However, the explosion of streaming combined with the pandemic has elevated and aggravated working conditions, bringing 60,000 behind the scenes workers covered by these contracts to a breaking point. We risked our, hu- our we risked our health and safety all year working through the pandemic to ensure that our business emerged intact. Now, we cannot and will not accept a deal that leaves us with an unsustainable outcome. Mm -hmm. Because I remember when I was reading their articles, people were like, if change doesn't happen now, it's just going to get worse and worse. Like, they're just going to keep on thinking that they can, like, give us, give people worse working conditions. So, it's like, it's better if they, like, go on strike now and get what they need addressed than, like, wait on it. 
and shit get worse. Yeah. Um, and it's already pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, it's already like really bad, and especially just hearing like even just like small things that my friends have to do. Like most of our friends are like production assistants. Yeah, yeah. Um, and stuff, and like hearing what they have to do, and like them just being like, "This is like the norm." I'm like, but it shouldn't, yeah. you know? And I don't know. Like, it's just really, I just don't ever understand how like employers can like sit there and tell their workers like you. Like the show needs to go on. You know what I think it is? Maybe correct me if I'm wrong. People <laughs> who are <laughs> listening, I feel like it's because that's the way it's always has been. So like they just mm-hmm. since they began like that, they were like, well, that's that's yeah. just how it's been. I already went through that. Now it's your turn because that shows like, mm-hmm. um, that that shows determination. Yeah, because they're like, want. oh my god, you guys are too soft. Like a lot of people say that. Like a lot of older people say yeah. that about like our generation. I'm like, no, I, mean, I think you just, just got used. Abused, you weirdos. Yeah, I'm like, I think you just got too used to like being manipulated, yeah. babe. And I, and I think use. think you need help as well. Yeah, we like I'll go to therapy. We can get a group on. <laughs> we can get a group on. Um, yeah, I don't know, but yeah, I think that's basically what it is. Because I like again, oh my god, me always bringing the most unrelated comparisons. <laughs> but like, so like from okay, <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> You should be. It's so like in like frats. The reason <laughs> hazing is such a problem. Sorry. That is <laughs> not what I expected you to bring up right now. <laughs> the reason hazing. I guess I can see the connection. Yeah, though. yeah. The reason hazing is such a problem is because the the ones that are doing the hazing ha- were hazed themselves. And they're oh. like, well, if I have to suffer through it, then you do too. And because that yeah. shows that the pledges we want. Yeah, so but like it's like, kind of shouldn't you be like, I didn't like going through that. Yeah. So I don't want other people to go through that. I, I don't, that's what like, you would you think. Would be- <laughs> but clearly what we are seeing from so many different scenarios is that people want people to suffer because they did. Which <laughs> it's is like so that weird. wedding Williams audio. It's like, should she suffer? Clap if, she Clap suffer. if you think yeah, she yeah. should suffer. <laughs> like that's literally how yeah, yeah. the alliance of producers. And I think like, especially as somebody who wants to go into producing i'm just like kind of it's just like really annoying i guess to see that yeah to say the least least, because i do want a job yeah yeah, yeah. (laughs) it's just like i couldn't imagine telling the people that i need to like that are giving me the job like it's we're all working together yeah yeah. it just because like i'm quote i would be quote unquote getting paid more doesn't mean i'm better than you Yeah, yeah yeah like i'm just delegating no. And you guys are honestly doing the harder work. And like the disparities between. Okay, hold on. I'm going <laughs> to get ahead of myself really quick. But what if they don't go on strike? So this is if. Yeah, what I just said. If IATSE members do not authorize to vote or, or authorize a strike, it could impact the number of unionized film and TV product projects on the West Coast and nationally. That dog is. It's okay. The, the, the ADHD won't is up. not oh. loving it. Um, <laughs> no, I when I was reading and the dog started barking, I was like, Ooh, a challenge. I was like, wait, I can't, I can't read the <laughs> sentence. The dog is. Anyways, it could impact a number of unionized film and TV projects on the West Coast and nationally at the moment when productions in Los Angeles and New York finally rebounded to pre-pandemic le- levels. I think what I'm more interested in seeing how this pans out is for like shows that go that are like week to week. So like yeah. like uh, the late night shows that have like live studio audiences and those kind of things because the other shows you know they have like pre record stuff mm-hmm. so like I don't know like like a, like they a show can like they already have the season like yeah but the editors go and strike too yeah yeah so it's like you can't even finish you your have one season. or two left before yeah I'm just like and like nobody ever wants to go on strike no that is the worst case scenario yeah. is to go on strike and the fact that it's gone to that point is just very saying of what type of negotiations were going on yeah like no one because going on strike means that you're not working yeah going you on strike is like the worst case scenario mm-hmm. like it's like the one where it's like we have no other choice yeah but to go on and strike. you know what i remember when a professor is saying that's how he got into the industry uh-huh. is because there was a worker strike and he was non-union so that's how they get that's how they get away with it though is like they'll like uh-huh. allow non-union people to go on to the set yeah. to work their union and then they'll they'll get into the union because they worked on a union project mm. being on union so it's just like it's fucked up oh my god it's really fucked up and i remember my professor telling us that and i was like so because he was like yeah i had to like literally walk across the picket line so it was like a little weird a little awkward wait what because he was a non-union worker and the union workers were on strike oh. 
Oh. And he had to literally cross the picket line oh, to literally. go to work. I thought you were saying a metaphor. No, no. Like, he physically had to cross No, there's the little line. picket lines like yeah, yeah. outside of the studios. Yeah. So like he literally had to fucking <laughs> go past the union workers. Yeah. And like that's how he got in the union. And he was like, it's kind of fucked up. But like that's just what you had to do. And that's that's fucked up that that's just quote unquote what you have to do. It stresses me out. Yeah, guess. no, literally <laughs> the whole thing is just mm-hmm. so stressful. Um, oh, and Lord. then also like something I was reading is just like hustle hustle culture, yeah. and like the film and industry, film and television industry knows how many people want to go into it, yeah. and especially like, oh my god, that's why I'm hope this gets like figured out now because there's a yeah. lot of people our age that wants to go in the industry, and I just especially like people like us who like don't have any connections to the industry mm-hmm. and literally need to fight our fucking way into it. Yeah. It's like, they're going to not prey on us, but also prey on us. No, but literally prey on us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, so, it's so fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, because they know we quote unquote need the job and it's like this toxic. Like we yeah. <laughs> like we do. And like, I, I would love a job. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to sit here in front that I won't, I wouldn't love a job, yeah. but like it, I do want better working conditions. I want better working conditions for everybody. Yeah. Um, but also hustle, hustle culture is just like, like, Oh, that's just the grind. That's just how it is in the industry. Yeah. Those, those, those tweets that are like, like, Oh, what did you do with that? $600 uh, like pandemic checks. I started a business. Like, have you seen those tweets? Yeah. Where it's like, Oh, like, why didn't you do more? And I'm like, mm-hmm. some people have to pay rent. Like even like sir. the girl bosses that yeah. are like, Oh my God, I'm planning my week. Hee <laughs> hee. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, you do get burnt out at yeah. some point. And like, even like it goes to like YouTubers, like people that post like multiple times a week. And oh then God. they like burn Dude, out. Are you watching the Bethany Moda episode? Yeah. Oh my god! Literally, yeah, I was watching it right before you got here. Yeah, and then I watched the the video from Ryan Higa, yeah. and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Yeah, it's that's a fucked up cycle because they're literally like pumping out content, like mm-hmm. and w- which is like also part of this too. Like they're literally just trying to get as much done as they can in such a short, like almost impossible amount of time, which is why the like, fact that a movie gets made in like maybe two months is just insane to me. Yeah, like. I, it, it doesn't compute in my head. No. Like, knowing how much, like, is left on, like, the editing floor. Yeah, I don't know. It's just bonkers to me. Um, So, yeah, I think hustle culture is just toxic. And, like, it's okay to need a break. And, like, we need to, like, not shame people for taking a step back and, like, yeah. putting themselves forward. And because, like, it is, like, what we've been saying is, like, it's really toxic. Like, somebody's going to take your job type of thing. And I don't think that's fair for human beings to do that because then you're working these 20 hour work days. And another thing was like because of the pandemic, people like got finally got to spend time with their families. And then when they started working again, working these 20 hour days, they're like, I don't see anybody. And I think it just kind of made everybody realize like it. it, I mean, I think we said this before, like this whole year of the pandemic has just made people realize like, wait, like everything's really shitty and like we shouldn't have no, to literally. live like this yeah so yeah i saw this thing where did i see this oh my god yesterday at the global citizen live concert like in between like the performances they would have like um videos of stuff whatever mm-hmm. and one of the i don't remember they were talking about something about climate change i don't remember exactly what the clip was about but he said like the pandemic like uh sh- revealed like all the cracks Mm-hmm. In our country, and I was like, oh "My God, period." It did it showed all our flaws because, like, it literally did. Because, like, I mean, even everything, even like, this sounds really like left field, but like, even like uh, when you go to, I, I've been saying for the past thirty minutes, when you're in American school, you have to do the Pledge of Allegiance every single yeah. day, and then like the Fourth of July, and like it's literally like and like taking Columbus Day. It's literally propaganda that yeah. we're just growing up on. Me when I saw, okay. Unrelated again. Not us being no, conspiracy theory podcast. Like this one's getting further and further. Have you seen <laughs> the ads for the U.S. military? Yeah, that look like they a look like Call of Marvel Duty. Movie. Yeah. yeah, I was like, what is? It? And I was like, oh my god, this is like literally propaganda. Because I remember when we would learn about propaganda, I'd be like, I'm pretty sure I noticed that. Yeah, like it looks so obvious. And so then when I was watching the tr- like, I usually just like obviously like skip YouTube, whatever. But then I remember I was watching it the other day. I was like, oh my god, this is like propaganda. Like this is our generation's propaganda because yeah. they know that this is what this generation they're wants. literally weaponizing video games like lo- boys loving and video to games be the main character like you want to be the main character join the military yeah anyway you want to kill people it's in so real scary. life i've been wanting to say that for join the longest the time like, it's kind of scary yeah 
Well, like, I know people that have been in... Uh, this, I was off track again? What well, I, I was just going to say, I know people that have been in the Marines and, like, they literally come back different people and, like, that's yeah. really scary oh, yeah, me too. to me. And it's, like, there's, like, a fine line between, like, discipline and brainwashing. I completely agree. Yeah. And I think that goes beyond the military. I think that goes to, like, literally just being in a capitalistic well, like, like yeah, society yeah. to, to be honest back, i don't know how we managed to tie back these things honestly to our <laughs> original. I, I really like sometimes the stretch our is like stretching because <laughs> i really don't but like just how like this person was talking about how like she didn't know how to turn off the like go 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 like mm-hmm. hustle. Um, hustle like work a holly girl she boss was uh-huh. because like that was just what you had to become mm-hmm. and then she it's didn't just know like and it's also just like this like Oh, Americans aren't lazy. They, they like do all these things and like they like put it, yeah, and they put it onto like people of color, like the sleeping Mexican or whatever. When it's like Mexicans are probably one of the hardest working people. They're the ones literally out. Like a lot of people, like I remember when I went to school in Cal Lutheran because Oxnard's right there, and that's where a lot of produce comes from. Yeah, yeah. And like just seeing all the videos of them literally working all day in fucking ninety degree weather, and they have to wear like long sleeves and like double shirts. And haul that huge thing. And of like, yeah, you know. it's just crazy. And like how, like, why did people make up these like terrible stereotypes to put onto people of color yeah. when they are literally the people like carrying it all on their back? But also that just shows how awful working conditions are for like yeah. the majority of people. Yeah, I think that's another thing. Like growing up, it was just really hard for me to like understand like hierarchy, I guess, in a way, because okay. like like being on the bottom so like i guess in college is like a good analogy like being a student i guess quote unquote you be on the bottom but then in reality you're the student paying for tuition and everything so you're paying for like everybody above you quote unquote so like that administration and stuff and then being in student government i was like so this is just like a facade yeah so it's just like oh you just needed you just want students to fuck around for like a year and like maybe give out a couple hundreds of thousands of dollars to clubs and organizations. But when we actually want to like have actual change and like sexual assault cases be taken seriously and like these bigger issues to be taken seriously, you're not going to actually listen to us like racist teachers and stuff. Like they weren't actually listening to us. And I was just like, well, I don't like this. And then I was like, then I like had existential crisis. I was like, Oh my God, this is how everything is. Yeah. Whoa. Right, I have those like once a week. Yeah. And it's just like, so it's just funny. really scary. Cause like, I just can't imagine like being in, cause I remember I would have to like work with other people that were also in higher positions with me on like student government and like other things. And like, just hearing them put themselves first and also put interests of like other people that weren't students first i was like huh i don't care what these people want i don't care what these adults want that's not who i'm serving i'm literally serving the student body as far as student government i don't give a fuck about what old rich white people that paid for a fucking building donated hundreds of thousands of dollars to slap their name on a building i honestly don't care like i'm sure they do great things but also like how much of it is an ego stroke yeah again getting far off topic but I think it just, I mean, mm. going back on the topic, it just goes back to like all these executives and these producers, like you would not have your job if you couldn't employ all these other people. So I, again, I just don't understand why it's so hard to want people to have rest because if you have rest and you're, you can work at better functionalities. Yeah. And I mean, isn't there studies that it's like, yeah. if you have a four day work week, you actually get more done. If you have, if you have like the yeah. work week we do have now, there's yeah. studies about this. Why yeah. don't we do that? There's, or like, so I remember when we were in high school, it was like, if school started later in the day, like at 9 a.m. instead of 7 a.m., students have better productivity. And like they get, it was like, I remember reading that because it was like, they get, they, I think we read it in school. We might have, <laughs> and nothing happened. Yeah. Um. It was like if you do that, then it not it like it it like has like a like a domino effect. Like it also like leaves less time for students after school to do sketchy things. Like it was mm-hmm. like a whole slew of things that would come from it. But like people don't listen to scientists, which is insane. And like I remember <laughs> I seeing like I, w- I got on scientist TikTok f- for a little bit, and like people were like this girl who like was a scientist for infectious diseases, and she worked in China. And she like saw COVID and like she told all her family like be safe and they like didn't listen to her 
at all and she literally felt crazy yeah. like they were like gaslighting her essentially yeah. and she's like but this is literally like my life yeah like this is what i i studied years for and then you're not going to take people through like then why are we funding science yeah what people are like, Go to stand, but don't listen to them <laughs> No, it's literally, it's crazy. And like people will always make excuses not to listen to scientists, but it's like, huh? That's a, I don't know. It's that's super weird. Um, and so I think it's also just crazy to think about how much studios make. Like when you like hear yeah. about how much a movie grossed at the box office, like Avengers, like billions of dollars. And it's yeah. like, oh, there's billions of dollars, but you couldn't pay your grip a living <laughs> wage, babe. Huh? That's like when I don't understand where like these huge corporations they they're like oh budget cuts I'm like what budget cuts you literally make like quadrillion dollars you are the richest company on this planet and you cannot afford this and yeah. like, I'm me trying to keep that as vague as possible <laughs> so that we get jobs. top grossing um, directors okay so Steven Spielberg has made is that oh my god what is what number is that billion are- is that billion no, that's more because that's not a period. Zoom in. Oh my god, that is a lot of. Is that right? I don't even know how to read that number to be honest. It's like, or maybe that's. Is. That's a lot of money. How many is four three decimals? That's trillion, but like, is that right? Ten trillion dollars at box office. Like he doesn't have it, but his movies no, yeah. have made that much. I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense. Draws ten ET trillion. And like the Jurassic Park. Which yeah, like yeah. But the Russo brothers. Six oh trillion. Oh I guess that makes sense because of Marvel. Those are like the highest grossing Endgame movies alone. ever. <laughs> and then Peter Jackson with six trillion. Tr- that's trillion. That's trillion. Yeah, because there's three decimals. Yeah. My yeah. brain could not Thomas. compute yeah, that. Yeah, no, I literally was staring at that. Like, that's not right. Michael Bay. Right. Okay, so Steven Spielberg has thirty six movies. He averages. Can you read that number? <laughs> I'm not good at math, 20, guys. That's not, yeah. It's 293 million per movie. Average. No, that's not right. 293. Oh my god. <gasps> that's trillion. No. This is this, <laughs> this is hundred. That's thousands. <laughs> We're so that's dumb. That's hundred thousands. I right? swear to God, I can do like <laughs> shit on Excel. I swear to God. Yeah, that is million. That's 293 million. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hundred thousands is this one still. So that's billions. Ten mm. billion dollars. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh I was like trillion seems like absurd Yeah no one comes here for the math so it's fine <laughs> But just what we're trying to say Is like yeah. they make a stupid amount of money Honestly between billion and trillion like literally There's no difference you have too much Yeah. Like, that's and look at all of them Men, Men. Where's all the first woman can we find her on the spot Jennifer Lee it's what, 37 Um, But yeah it's just like obscene amounts of money Yeah and for people because I feel like I can't visualize numbers but if you can I couldn't even yeah. imagine that much money being in my bank account No me either Ever mm. Crazy And like thinking about like the houses that they live in Multi-million dollar homes And like The cars that they have And stuff like that It's just like This is gonna end in a spiral I mean not for me I think oh. I think I knew <laughs> <Not> for you <laughs> Well, Daniel was like, I didn't even read into it because I I knew I was going to spiral about it. Yeah. Well, I just saw people posting about it and I was like, well, I know I personally won't like I can sign the thing. But that's as much as I can personally do about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess we're kind of doing something. Oh, that's true. But our podcast barely for like the 60 people that listen. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Johnny. (laughs) Thank you, Johnny. Shout out Gianni. Um, (laughs) But yeah, I think we just wanted to like do this bonus Jonas episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just to like talk about it and also because I didn't want to lose a week. Yeah. Um, but like, it's good to like bring it up because uh, and if, we'll, if we'll if be talking about it like as it, like it develops and yeah. stuff. Because if we didn't do it like as its own episode, it was going to end up being a pre-show and that would have been too rushed. I yeah. Think. That's what I told Daniel because yeah. it's like, I think it's okay if we don't have an episode. And I was like, I think we should talk about this. Yeah. It'll be like a, sh- a bonus episode. But like if we did, cause that's what I thought too. I was like, if we talk about this in the pre-show, it's like, it's not, enough it's not enough time to talk about it. No. Um, but you know, I'm hopeful because now it like it's moved so fast within like the past two weeks and like that they're like, oh, we might go on strike and it's like, okay, yeah, we might go on strike. We have to like vote. And then within like the next, uh, they, within the next like couple weeks, we'll know if they're actually going on strike. And I'm just yeah. very interested to see how this impacts the yeah. industry. Cause it's like a really fucking big deal if they, when they do go on strike. Yeah. I'm going to say when. Okay. 
We're going to talk in present terms. Um, so this is this is going to be our call to action. Call to action, yes. So what you can do is you can sign the petition. It's going to be in the link in our bio. Um, send it to any industry or non-industry people you know. Send it in your group chats, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and just get those signatures because they're almost there, honestly. Yeah. Um, and then also on the Instagram that we were mentioning earlier, IA underscore stories. They have a link tree, which has like a bunch of resources for people that are union. Um, there's like video mm-hmm. testimonials. There's like updates about the whole situation. Um, there's and it's resources. good to know if you want to get into the industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's like also like politics. Like everybody should be knowing of like their local politics. Yeah. Because this is shit that's going to directly affect you. Yeah. Anyways. So, yeah, that's what you can do. Um, again, we just kind of have to wait and see what happens. Mm-hmm. On October 1st. Yeah. Well, no buyer finale, I guess. Like, if they're going on strike. Yeah. If I ever schedule it. I don't know what's going on. We guys. We'll talk oh, about yeah, it yeah, after. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you guys don't need to hear this. Yeah, no, you talk. don't. Oh, my God. I was, <laughs> I was doing business meetings live, like, yeah. half the time. No, literally, like, probably 90% of the time. Of the pre-show is just us doing. At least we're transparent. But I like hearing when people talk about it. I think, yeah, I always, I'm, I think us. it's because we're nosy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm always like, I want to be a fly on that wall. Yesterday at the (laughs) concert, there was this lady in front of us. She was like, I don't know, older. So her her text on her screen, on her like phone was like literally size 100. (laughs) So to the point where like four words fit on the screen, like literally four words. I've seen those. So everyone around us was watching her. We were all fighting like it was her birthday. Her birthday's coming out. She's going out of town for the first of the 31st to celebrate. I was like, go. go First to the 31st? Yeah. I don't Damn. know where she's going, but she's having a celebration. Oh, she's we retired. She's reading. good. Yeah. She live in all social security. She's like, I would love to help, but I'm going out of town the first 31st. And I was like, oh my, well, she could have been maybe just trying to get out of something. Oh. But my mom and I were like reading it. And then we looked around. She said, I'm booked the whole reading. month. Yeah, <laughs> she did. I got October. Me, me booked the whole of October. I was like, nobody talked to me. <laughs> um. Anyways. Yeah. We'll be back next week. We have a really fun guest. If they upload in the order that I think they're going yeah. to. Yeah. We'll, We'll leave you on Who suspense. Knows? It's cl- it's a cliffhanger, but I think yeah. we have a really cool guest. That it's like different than any of the guests we've had before. Mm-hmm. It's exciting. Okay, bye guys. Okay, bye guys.